In previous modules, we used the idea of compound interest to motivate the definition of e to the x as a limiting process, which we used to derive the representation of e to the x as a series expansion, which we then used to demonstrate ways in which e to the x behaves like a base, call it e, roughly equal to 2.7, taken to a power x. We showed that the derivative of e to the x was itself e to the x. To get to the final expression on this outline, the indefinite integral, we will first introduce the natural logarithm. Using the power series, or multiplying uh, e equals 2.7 against itself various times, we can make a plot of e to the x. When drawn on equal y and x scales, it rises quickly. We draw the y equals x diagonal and then reflect the turquoise curve of e to the x across the diagonal to obtain the yellow plot of what is called the natural logarithm whose association rule, here spelled out literally with the letters ln, parenthesis x, close parenthesis, uh, that's pronounced the natural logarithm of x. What is the composite function natural log applied after e applied to x? Consider this particular value of x. We will do the inside function and then the outside function. The inside function is e to the x. e to the x for this particular x is 4. To feed this output from the inside function e to the x, this 4, to feed that into the outside function, the natural logarithm, we copy the height of the y value onto the x-axis. x equals 4 is now the input for the association rule natural log on x, which spits out its own y value, the final y value we seek. The resulting point resides on the y equals x diagonal. Can you see that the magenta pebble will always land on the diagonal y equals x? The natural logarithm applied after the exponential e to the x spits back out x. The natural logarithm is the inverse of the exponential e to the x. Please walk yourself through a similar set of pink dashed lines to confirm visually that e to the x undoes the natural logarithm, meaning that e to the natural log on x equals x. We have defined the natural logarithm as the inverse of the exponential. This means that the natural logarithm is basically the order of magnitude. Here's how. Recall that the pth power of e to the x is e to the px. Apply the natural logarithm to both sides. The natural logarithm undoes exponentiation with base e, so we can bring down the power px. Again, the natural logarithm is the undo button for e to the x, so we are permitted to act on x with e if we undo this application by also then applying a natural logarithm. Everywhere we had e to the x, instead now write q, so that we get natural log of q to the p equals p times natural log of q. Since we did not specify x, we are now free to choose x so that e to the x, meaning q, equals 10. Hence, natural log of 10 to the p equals p times natural log of 10. If you plot the yellow curve all the way out to x equals 10, you will find that natural log of 10 is roughly 2.3. That's because the natural logarithm rises very slowly. 10 to the p is a number whose order of magnitude is called p. That's what we mean by order of magnitude. We mean the power attached to the base 10. Uh, usually it's reported rounded to the nearest integer. Other than a factor of about 2.3, applying the natural logarithm to the number 10 to the p spits out its order of magnitude p. The natural logarithm can be interpreted as the function that provides order of magnitude. Please define the symbol log base 10 on x so that log base 10 on 10 to the p equals p. There is no factor 2.303, just precise equality. Can you relate log base 10 on x with the natural log on x? The answer is not provided in this video. In the next module, we will show a property of logarithms eventually useful for describing dynamics and chemical reaction systems.